Hey, stop throwing away dead plants and mature weeds. The Berkeley Hot Composting Method turns them into safe compost in just three weeks. So picture this. You've just finished pulling weeds that are bursting with seeds, or maybe you've ripped out tomato vines covered in blight and cucumber stems dotted with mildew. Normally, you'd hesitate to compost this kind of material because, honestly, you don't want to spread diseases or, you know, sow next year's weed problem across your bed, so... What do you do, burn it, bag it for disposal, or just leave it rotting in a forgotten pile? But what if I told you there's a proven way, not only to make these so-called problem materials safe, but to actually turn them into a nutrient-rich compost your soil will love, ready in just three weeks? That's the power of the Berkeley Hot Composting Method. Developed at the University of California, Berkeley, this method combines the science of microbial activity with the art of composting, giving gardeners a reliable, fast, and effective way to recycle almost any organic material. Unlike those slow, cold piles that take a year or more and just fail to destroy pathogens, this system creates heat intense enough to neutralize weed seeds, fungi, and harmful bacteria, all while producing a dark, earthy compost that feeds crops like nothing else. If you've ever felt limited in what you could compost, this method opens the door to a whole new level of self-reliance in the garden. Let's uh, dive deep into how you can master it. Traditional compost piles rely on slow decomposition. Left to their own devices, microbes break down organic matter over months, often unevenly. The outer layers remain untouched, while the inner core might eventually rot down. But in the process, many seeds and disease spores survive, ready to return to your garden beds. Berkeley composting changes everything by harnessing heat. When organic materials are mixed at the right carbon-to-nitrogen balance, moistened and turned regularly, microorganisms go into overdrive. Their activity generates heat, quickly raising the pile's temperature into a range of 131 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit, or 55 to 71 degrees Celsius. Within this thermal window, weed seeds are destroyed, fungal spores collapse, and even many plant pathogens are neutralized. The result isn't just faster composting, it's safer composting. You no longer have to fear spreading garden problems through your compost pile. Instead, you transform liabilities into assets. The Berkeley method starts with what you put into the pile. Think of your materials in two broad categories. Greens or nitrogen-rich materials include fresh grass clippings, weeds, vegetable scraps, coffee grounds, and manure from herbivores like rabbits or chickens. Browns or carbon-rich materials include things like dry leaves, straw, shredded paper, cardboard, sawdust, or even small wood chips. The classic formula is a 30 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio. That might sound complicated, but in practice it's really simple. Just use equal volumes of greens and browns. This rule of thumb works because, you know, greens actually contain some carbon alongside their nitrogen, and browns have a bit of nitrogen along with their carbon. When you layer them in equal parts by volume, they balance beautifully. One critical step for speed is size reduction. Chop or shred materials down to pieces no larger than 1 to 4 centimeters. You can run branches through a chipper, cut stems with shears, and mow or chop grass and weeds. Smaller pieces expose more surface area to microbes, which accelerates decomposition and helps everything heat evenly. If there's one variable that really makes or breaks composting, it's moisture. Microbes just can't function in dry conditions, and they'll actually suffocate in waterlogged ones. For Berkeley composting, you want to aim for about 50% moisture. The easiest test, honestly, is by hand. Just grab a handful of the mix and give it a good squeeze. If it drips, it's definitely too wet. If it crumbles apart dry, it needs more water. The perfect pile should feel like a wrung-out sponge. You know, damp, springy, and holding together without dripping. If your pile is dry, go ahead and sprinkle water as you build, making sure to mix it through the layers. If it's too wet, just add more browns like shredded straw, cardboard, or dry leaves to soak up that excess moisture. 
So the magic number for pile size is at least one cubic meter. Think three feet by three feet by three feet. This minimum volume is what really allows heat to accumulate and sustain itself. Smaller piles, well, they just lose energy way too quickly to the surrounding air, and that means they fail to reach the pathogen killing range. Larger piles are totally fine. Just make sure you can actually manage turning them. You want to build your pile in alternating layers of greens and browns and, you know, sprinkle a bit of water as you go to keep everything evenly moist. By the time you're done, it should be a firm sponge-like cube or mound, not a sloppy heap. Once your pile is built, just let it sit for two or three days. This little pause allows microbial activity to ramp up and the core temperature to climb. Within this short window, your compost will already start to feel warm to the touch. A compost thermometer is a helpful tool for this method, but, you know, it's not essential. The goal is to keep the core temperature between 131 and 160 degrees Fahrenheit. If it goes higher, beneficial microbes start dying, and decomposition slows down. When temperatures rise above 160 degrees Fahrenheit, it usually indicates excess nitrogen. In that case, turn the pile immediately and add extra browns such as sawdust or straw. This brings the carbon to nitrogen balance back in line and, well, prevents overheating. When temperatures fall below 131 degrees Fahrenheit before the pile is finished, it usually means there's insufficient oxygen or moisture. Turn the pile to aerate it and check if water needs to be added. Turning is where the Berkeley method earns its speed. The technique is simple. Take the pile apart, shifting what was on the outside into the center, and moving the hotter inner material to the outer edges. This rotation ensures every part of the pile spends time in the hot zone, achieving full pathogen kill and thorough breakdown. The frequency of turning determines how fast your compost finishes. Turning every two days results in compost in about three weeks. Turning daily can produce finished compost in just 18 days. Whichever schedule you choose, consistency matters most. Think of it like exercise. Skipping a turn is like skipping a workout. The microbes rely on oxygen and the pile depends on your effort to keep conditions optimal. Not all organic matter belongs in a Berkeley pile, so you'll want to avoid adding a few things ash, which throws off pH balance, pet waste from cats or dogs, since it can harbor harmful pathogens, and uh, meat, fat, or dairy, because those attract pests and create unpleasant odors. These materials either disrupt microbial balance or pose safety risks. It's best to stick to plant-based matter and manures from herbivores for the cleanest, most reliable compost. A healthy Berkeley pile has several unmistakable signs. You'll see steam rising when you turn it, especially in cool weather, and inside you may notice white fungal growth, which is actually an excellent indicator of microbial richness. The pile will shrink visibly as materials break down and its color will darken to deep brown or black. Perhaps most importantly, the smell will stay pleasant, earthy, and sweet, like a forest floor. If you ever notice sour, rotten, or ammonia-like odors, that's a sign something is off. Usually, a quick adjustment of moisture or carbon balance brings things back on track. Finished compost is easy to recognize. The temperature will drop back to ambient levels and no longer rise after turning. The pile will be dark, crumbly, and smell like fresh woodland soil. You should no longer be able to recognize the original ingredients. Everything will have merged into a uniform humus. While the compost is technically ready at this point, letting it cure for several additional weeks makes it even better. During curing, fungal hyphae spread, stabilizing the material and enhancing its structure. Simply leave the pile untouched during this time. Unlike the active phase, cured compost doesn't need turning. One benefit gardeners often overlook with the Berkeley method is the exercise it provides. Turning a one cubic meter pile every day or two is no small task. It's a full body workout. You bend, lift, twist, and move in ways that engage muscles across your back, core, and arms.
Instead of paying for a gym membership, you're strengthening your body while feeding your soil. The best part? You can't procrastinate. If the pile needs turning, it has to be done. This rhythm creates a healthy discipline that benefits both you and your garden. So once cured, your Berkeley compost is ready to apply. You can use it to enrich vegetable beds, amend soil for perennials, or even top-dress lawns and fruit trees. Its balanced nutrients and rich microbial life really make it a universal soil booster. Unlike synthetic fertilizers, which, you know, offer a quick jolt but no lasting improvement, compost enhances soil structure, water retention, and long-term fertility. Because the method neutralizes pathogens and seeds, you can use the compost confidently, even on delicate seedlings and disease-prone crops. This assurance is honestly one of the Berkeley method's greatest strengths. If you've ever struggled with slow, cold composting or maybe hesitated to compost diseased plants, the Berkeley method is a real game-changer. It combines scientific precision with hands-on activity, delivering safe, rich compost in record time. The system does demand commitment, regular turning, monitoring, and attention to detail. But the payoff is, honestly, remarkable. In just three weeks, you convert what most gardeners consider waste into one of the most valuable resources a garden can have. Now it's your turn. Gather equal parts greens and browns, chop them down, moisten them, and build a pile at least one cubic meter in size. Stick to your turning schedule, Keep an eye on moisture and temperature, and in three weeks, you'll have black gold ready for your soil. Once you try this method, you'll never look at garden waste the same way again. Instead of worrying about weeds, seeds, and diseases, you'll start to see them as ingredients for the next batch of healthy compost. The Berkeley Hot Composting Method isn't just about speed. It's about control, safety, and honestly, maximizing the potential of every scrap of organic material your garden produces. By following its principles, you eliminate risks, accelerate decomposition, and produce a product that enriches your soil for seasons to come. So next time you pull a weed or prune a diseased plant, don't throw it away. Feed it to your compost pile and just watch it transform. If you found this guide useful, make sure to subscribe to Soil and Crops Central for more in-depth science-based gardening tips. Share this with fellow gardeners who need a reliable way to compost fast. Together, we can grow healthier soils, stronger crops, and more sustainable gardens.